Hi, my friends. Thank you for joining me today on Mr. Dyer's Museums. I'm Mr. Dyer. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to put a blanket roll on one of the old style Boy Scout backpacks. Stay with me. I appreciate you guys joining me this evening as we take a look at the backpack and how to put a blanket roll on it. This was a question that was posted to me by one of our patrons on Patreon. If that's something you'd be interested in supporting this channel and joining the League of Patrons on Patreon, please check out my Patreon page, Mr. Dyer's Musings. I want to thank you for taking the time and watching this video. Do me a favor, please click like if you like it, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And please share it with others, especially if you know others who like artifacts, camp crafts, civil war, things like that. Because we take a look at artifacts and primary sources, and if they're in good enough shape, we actually use them. Kind of like what we're going to do tonight. Okay? Alright my friends, so what we have here is one of the older Yucca Boy Scout knapsacks. Now it's important to note that a guy my size is going to have trouble using one of these backpacks. They were designed for kids, and in truth, this was before McDonald's came out, and people uh, tended to be in a little bit better shape, physic wise, physically wise, and uh, just historically speaking, you know, we were skinnier and shorter and things like that. So, uh, what we have here is a knapsack, and I'm going to show you how historically scouts put the bedroll on their knapsack. And it's kind of self-explanatory just by looking at it here, but I'm going to take you through some of the nuances and why it was done the way it was done. And some things that you may want to consider when packing your own knapsack. Okay. So first thing you may notice is that I have a hatchet here on the side. Now the Boy Scout hatches, which is this is one of them, uh, if you see a lot of pictures of Scouts, they tend to wear them on their hips. They have a belt loop for it, and uh, a lot of Scouts did it that way, especially the artwork from Norman Rockwell. You always see the Scouts wearing the hatchet on the side. They kind of look like Batman with all the different things they could have put on their belt back in the day. But it, you're going through the woods and you're not going to be using your hatchet, it's kind of nice to just to stow it either on the side or inside your backpack, usually covered up uh, with the flap. Because there's no point in it staying on your hip, swinging and bumping, and when you need to sit or kneel, it needs to be moved out of the way. So having it on the side here just makes sense. And I'll do a future video on some of the historical Boy Scout hatchets that I have. Next thing you'll notice is that it is tied in a crisscross pattern. You can get as fancy with it or as basic with it as you'd like. But these little D-rings that are on the backpack were really nice because it, you could cinch it, even if this thing isn't completely loaded down, uh, nice and tight for a weight distribution. So it's not just shaking on your back. But historically, scouts tended to put their bed rolls in a horseshoe pattern, kind of like what the soldiers did in World War I. Uh, heck, even back in the American Civil War, your bed rolls tended to be either in your knapsack or rolled up on top. So that's just kind of carried over. Now the way I did it is I have one rope that's tied. And I go zigzag, zigzag. If it's much longer rope than this, I think it gets out of in the way if you don't have a bedroll on it. Um, 
but I find I think this is kind of perfect as far as the length of rope. You undo it, and there's your bed wall. Now this backpack has uh, ears on top that you can fasten. Also the pocket in front, you can use that to fasten it to keep everything nice and tidy. So even if your flat might be a little loose or come undone, then the stuff on the inside isn't going to get wet or fall out. So think of this flap as uh, another way of securing and keeping an area uh, waterproof. Now, scouts tend to have gum cloths. They didn't have plastic tarps. They did have painted cloths. Um, but even in the old Boy Scout catalogs, you would find that they had gum cloths, uh, even uh, surplus military items. So scouts would have had access to a gum blanket or a gum cloth to use for shelters or to use to put underneath of them for a bedroll or to even use as a makeshift poncho. Now, depending on the weather, it depends on where you really want to keep this. I like to keep it usually wrapped up on the blanket itself. And then I will tie it up in the backpack and that makes sure that the blanket stays nice and dry. But if you don't do that, then keep your gum blanket on top like so, so it's easy to get to when you need it. So the blanket itself, this is not a Boy Scout blanket, I don't own one, but you roll it up and put it around like a horseshoe, put it over, and there's a bottom D-ring, and all I did is create a loop, put it through the eyelet, and tie it down. Now once you get to your last D-ring, what I tend to do is just either do uh, two half hitches or even a clove hitch. But honestly, any knot that you can do to keep it cinched up is perfectly fine. Now since this is looped on here, it's already biting this flap. So the rope's not going to go anywhere once you have it divided. Bed roll's coming undone a little bit there. Cinch it down. Crisscross. Bring it over. Onto last D-ring. And again, all I have to do is do my two half hitches or they're similar knot. And there we have it all tied up again. Some of you might be thinking, well, why don't you attach it to the bottom, kind of like uh, some of the more contemporary knapsacks? Well, the reason why you don't want to attach it to the bottom is because it only has one D-ring here, and this one over here is not a D-ring. And even though this is heavy-duty canvas, this isn't supported with a piece of leather backing on the inside. So over time, the pressure against the canvas, it will tear, especially with weight or if you get snagged. So that's why you don't want to attach it to the bottom. Some of you might be tempted to use this D-ring, this D-ring, and this loop to 
tie up your bedroll, again, I would strongly urge against it. Now, if you have a sleeping bag, which was around in the 1930s, I wonder, well, how did they attach it then? Because this is going to be way too bulky for being inside like the bedroll is. Well, you have a couple choices. You could roll this up just like you do with a blanket and put it in the horseshoe pattern. You can also use the D-ring and you can attach it on top so that the weight is on top. I wouldn't do that though because the, the weight is going to be um, it's going to be off balance. So I would urge not to put it on top and try to, to lash it on. If you're going to do that, do the complete horseshoe. These older sleeping bags were made and they were advertised of waterproof canvas. Now this is really, really old. So the canvas is pretty worn. Uh, so this is no longer waterproof. But originally, that's what they did. And I even have a video of this set up so that scouts who didn't even have a tent could sleep outside with it and be moderately dry. And what about the tents, Mr. Dyer? What did the scouts do for tents? Didn't they carry the tents? Okay, so this is a World War II uh, shelter hat, pup tent. Okay, I have two halves here. Scouts did have uh, military pup tents that they used. But in the handbooks, the scouts were urged to actually have their tents, their heavy equipment, because remember, they're also carrying their pots and pans and things like that, um, have it dropped off at their campsite. Find somebody with a truck, or if you took a trolley, you could use a trolley to get it to it, and then you set up your stuff there before you set out for your hike. But scouts, for the most part, didn't do... Um, big hikes with a tent. They would again use their ground tarps, and which are significantly lighter than even a half tent. If your troop was really, really wealthy, then you might be able to afford a really nice lightweight tent that's made with what they called parachute. Let's see, if I remember right, parachute? No, no, not parachute. Um, balloon silk, and balloon silk was essentially uh, 800 thread count cotton. It's really tight weave cotton. And some of your earliest tents that were really expensive was that cotton. They weren't canvas. But if you touch them, then they're going to leak just like canvas. Okay? So putting your minds historically, you know, your options are going to be very different. Even Horace Kephart, which is different from Messick, Messick but even Horace Kephart was talking about having a base camp. And that's what the scouts did. Horace Kephart even urged that you don't want to camp where you're depriving yourself of sleep. You're not depriving yourself of, of comfort. Okay, when you went out into the woods, when you got away from it all, you wanted to enjoy yourself. And to do that, you would take more than just the bare necessities. So. The older scouts and Horace Kepper were not um, Appalachian Trail ultra lightweight hikers. Okay, now they carried a lot of gear on their persons. They might have went out for day hikes and things like that. They might have went for overnight hikes. But if they did that, then they weren't going to be carrying big heavy tents. They weren't going to be carrying big heavy mess ke kettles. Um, they might have been carrying a fry pan, somebody might be carrying an axe, somebody might be carrying a shovel. And that's where the patrol system really comes in, where you have a division of pieces. Honestly, just like uh, the American Civil War and even our current military. So you want to have some redundancies for your person in case you get separated from the group, but some of your heavy, heavier items and the group items, you would just break up amongst each other. So, let's take the sleeping bag and put it in the horse collar so you can see that being done.
Okay, so when you roll a sleeping bag for the horseshoe collar or even your blanket, you want the, uh, I don't know what to say, the, the open side, you actually want on the inside. That's going to help keep debris out of your bedroll and out of your sleeping bag. So as you can see, our flap is closing towards me, and then I'm going to roll it towards the edge. Okay, now I can grab this. As you can see, my sleeping bag is going to be dangling. So let's address that a little bit. So what we can do for that, we're going to put in about a, I don't know, about a foot in on each side. And again, we're going to roll it this way. Now you're going to have very bulky ends in here. So what you could do is if you had extra gear, like my axe, my hatchet, that it appears that I had lost. Where did I lose my hatchet? There's my hatchet. Okay, so you can take your hatchet you can put that on the inside. That'll take up some of the space in the sleeping roll itself. Even it out. Take my rope. Again, even this out. Now, you can see it's even with the bottom. Get that started. Make sure everything's tucked in. So here I ran into a little bit of bulk, I'm not able to get it all the way across, so I could put another piece of rope, put it over there so it's nice and secure. For the sake of this video, just going to tie it off like that. And there you have it. So now you have your pack bag, and I think I now know why I ran out of rope. My hatchet pointed up like so, so nice and flat. So that's something you want to make sure to address too. But this is how you would pack your bedroll or your sleeping bag on an old style Boy Scout backpack like the Yucca. 
5.574. This is sold. The number's not on it anymore. Um, so I don't remember what this one is, but I'll put it in the description. I talked about these backpacks in an earlier video, so I'll put the link right here to that so you can watch the video and, and hear about the differences. Because there are several differences about the ones that I have uh, personally, which is odd, because they were all made before 1954. If you found this video useful, please click like right now. And do me a favor, click subscribe if you're new to the channel and share with others. If they like history, if they like artifacts, then this is a channel form because we do it just like this. We take artifacts, we talk about its history, and we talk about its use. This is the first time that uh, I talked about how to do this. Um, so if you got one of these things laying around or maybe something similar, now you know how to do it. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones.